What is pre-workout? Last week I told you that pre-workout is a supplement that contains a laundry list of ingredients, some of which are added for some theoretical benefit. Today, I'm going to tell you about the five most common ingredients, but first, an allegory. When I was a kid in school, we were taught that you should never judge a book by its cover. But I hated school, and I love Tinder. And if Tinder's taught me anything, it's that books should be exclusively judged by their covers. I mean, sure, you can pretend to care about the contents, but everyone knows that you just want to bring it home and throw it up on your trophy shelf with the rest of your conquests. And I'm not talking about books. I'm talking about our first ingredient, beta alanine. The only reason that I started taking pre-workout was that I could avoid being the exact thing that the first ingredient's named after. I mean, talk about a bad first impression. How is something called beta supposed to make me alpha? <laughs> Guess we'll see. Beta alanine is a modified version of the amino acid alanine. Once ingested, an enzyme combines it with another amino acid for storage in the muscle tissue. The new molecule, carnosine, is used as an acidity buffering agent. It reduces lactic acid buildup in short-term, high-intensity exercise. How short-term? Well, longer than you might actually hope. Performance enhancing effects aren't noted until physical activities reach the 60 to 240 second range. This means it could benefit activities like high rep supersets, circuit training, interval sports like hockey, and CrossFit. Oh, so that's why they call it beta. Activities shorter than a minute, like strength training and football, or longer than four minutes, like endurance training or basketball, aren't likely to benefit at all from beta alanine. And our reports show that it may reduce perception of fatigue, but that's really not saying much because the right text message can have the exact same effect. Most studies indicate that beta alanine improves performance roughly 2.5% in the minute to four minute range. This may improve accrual of power over time, but it has little to no effect on one rep max or endurance sports. Whether or not I notice an effect remains to be seen, which shouldn't be the case with our next ingredient, creatine. One of the most well-studied and understood supplements for athletes. Creatine is stored exclusively in muscle cells and has two primary benefits. It draws in water, volumizing the muscle, and provides phosphorus as energy to muscle cells for additional reps, further enhancing hypertrophy and power output. Some studies show creatine to increase power output by 78.5% compared to the placebo. However, most studies use five grams of creatine. Some studies even find that two grams of creatine, the amount that's found in C4 and more than what's in most pre-workouts, is insufficient for athletes. We'll see if I can get results from this dosage. But if not, maybe I can get some from arginine, another amino acid. It's added for its theoretical ability to increase nitric oxide. No, not like the stuff that makes your car go so fast that you crash and kill yourself. More like the stuff that makes old dudes dicks hard so that they can get young chicks and buy them fast cars. Then they can crash your career and kill your reputation. Hmm. Guess there are some similarities. When you consume arginine, it's converted to citrulline and orthanine through the nitric oxide synthase enzyme, and nitric oxide is given off as a byproduct. Nitric oxide is used to enhance blood flow, ideally bringing more blood to the muscle for better pump and nutrient supply. The issue with this is nitric oxide production isn't limited by the supply of arginine. So rather than increasing your NO, you might just be increasing the value of your piss. Some studies show arginine increasing the body's NO production, while others show no change at all. So the verdict's still out on this one. Unlike with our next ingredient, caffeine, a compound that deserves a video of its own. For now, I'll just cover the basics. Its benefits range from increased power output, to a metabolic boost, to increased wakefulness. However, once you gain a tolerance for caffeine, these benefits are greatly diminished to the point where only the anti-sleep benefits are seen, which have little to no physiological benefits, similar to tyrosine, our last ingredient and third amino acid. It's used in the production of neurochemicals dopamine and noradrenaline, and appears to be effective during acute stressors like exercise. However, like arginine, tyrosine is not the limiting factor in this process. This means that adding in more tyrosine does not necessarily stimulate more neurochemical production. Even if it does stimulate dopamine and norepinephrine production, it still doesn't have any direct physiological benefits. The benefits are only mental, which no current scientific studies have linked directly to physical improvements. So while these ingredients have some theoretical benefits, most of them are either unproven, minimal, or underdosed. But when you use a combination, will all these supplements have any effect? Be sure to subscribe to find out. Next week, I'll be going over what ingredients to avoid if you choose to go down the pre-workout route. And the week after that will be my results from my trial run with C4. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please help out. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below telling me about your experience with pre-workout or what's holding you back from trying it. Let me know. And until next time, keep strong, lift on.